You're listening to Catholic Express, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hey there, Sprouts. Today is Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020. This week on the Catholic Sprouts podcast, we are talking about great black Catholics, people with dark skin that love Jesus, that love the church and did incredible things for Jesus and the church. We've already talked about Venerable Augustus Tolton. We talked about Venerable Henriette de Lille. And today we are going all the way to South Africa to talk about Blessed Benedict Deswa. Now, Benedict, he lived in South Africa and he did not grow up Catholic. In fact, in South Africa, there are various religious belief. His family grew up vaguely practicing Judaism, but more than anything, they practice types of superstition. Many people in South Africa believe in witches and magic and charms. And even those that have converted to Catholicism still hold on to these ancient beliefs. And a lot of what they they are motivated by is fear. If something bad happens, they think that perhaps there is a bad witch out there casting spells. Or if they have a big event coming up, they will try to use magic and charms to have the event go their way. So this is the world that Blessed Benedict grew up in. He also grew up very, very poor, but he was a very bright man. And even from an early age, he was very interested in helping those that needed help. Soon, this characteristic inside of him led him to be a teacher and a principal. He worked hard to make sure that his younger siblings got educated. And then he was always trying to bring education to those in his village and around him that were poor or that didn't value education. When he was a young adult, he went to a large city and it was there that he was exposed to the Catholic church. He was convinced that this was truth. He fell in love with the Eucharist and Mary and the sacraments and he converted. Then he went back to the village where he was from. He got married. He was the father of eight children and he continued to teach, but also to live out his Catholic faith. While there, he built the very first Catholic church in that area of South Africa. And he was working hard to convert people and to bring them into the church with him. But remember, he lived in the same place where he had grown up that relied on witches and magic charms and lived in fear of bad magic. So he was constantly running into this. For example, he was on a soccer team and in his little area of South Africa, it was not uncommon for a soccer team to hire what they called a witch doctor to both cast charms in their favor and give them all sorts of lucky charms. In fact, the soccer team would pool money to pay for the witch doctor. At one point, Benedict was on a soccer team that was trying to hire a witch doctor and he quit. He went and founded his own because he knew that these these lies of magic, not only were they false, but they also were tempting evil, that it was an evil presence and he wanted nothing to do with that. He was constantly talking about this, protecting his own family from it, and trying to convince others not to give in to these ancient superstitions based on magic and evil. Now, eventually, one summer, in the summer of 1989, there was heavy rains in the area where he lived. And along with those rains came heavy lightning, strange lightning, kind of a strange weather occurrence. And the lightning was striking various homes and houses in the area where he lived. Well, because of the culture, they decided that this was being caused by magic. In fact, they thought that there was some sort of evil witch out there casting spells. So the community gathered a tax that would pay for the hunting down of this bad witch. Benedict refused to pay the tax because, again, this would be giving in to evil. It would be giving in to all of these false ideas. So he refused. Now, the people that he lived with were good people. 
They were kind, but they were also controlled by fear. They really thought there was an evil witch out causing these lightning strikes. And they were terrified that if they didn't do something, that it would continue. When Benedict refused to pay, and since he was a prominent member of the community, he was trying to convince other people to let go of this superstition and to not pay themselves, the people of the village were furious. And as a result, one night when Benedict was coming back home, they gathered rocks and they met his car out on the road and they stoned him and clubbed him to death. Benedict ended up dying because he refused to support these evil practices in his village. The last words that blessed Benedict Deswa said before he died were, God, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Now, the reason why Blessed Benedict Deswa has been named Blessed is because he died a martyr. He refused to give in to the evil practices of witches and charms, and he held strong to his Catholic faith, even trying to convert others, even when he knew full well how fearful his village was and how dangerous this fear could make them. So he died a martyr for the faith. Now, Sprouts, my challenge for you today is to remind yourself that evil is real and that messing around with things like magic and charms, even though we might not think it's a big deal, it is a big deal. Blessed Benedict Deswa gave his life to protect himself and his family from the evil influences of things like magic and charms. So let's pray through the intercession of Blessed Benedict Deswa that we can hold strong and to resist evil at every turn. Blessed Benedict Deswa, pray for us. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Just one more thing. This week we are talking about great black Catholics because it is so important that every child, every person in fact, know that no matter what they look like, they are called to be a saint as well. Earlier this spring and early summer, I was struck when I heard Black Catholics Alive Today talk about how they grew up not realizing that people that looked like them were saints and therefore not realizing that they could be a saint as well. Now, this, this is horrible. That is not how any child should grow up. And also, every child, no matter what they look like, should realize that every other person, no matter what they look like, are also called to be a saint. Now, I know that racism, especially in the churches, is something that we are all working to eliminate. Over here at Catholic Sprouts, we're trying to pitch in and do our little bit. Now, to this end, we created a board book called Saints Like Me, Great Black Catholics that features each of the saints that we're talking about on the podcast this week, as well as a few others. Our goal is that this book can show children that there are great black Catholic saints in heaven and that they too, no matter what they look like, can be a saint as well. The book is on sale right now, and you can find a direct link to it in the notes for this podcast episode. And don't worry, we are already working on great Asian Catholics, great Latino Catholics, and we are open to any other ideas that you have because we are all called to holiness. We are all called to be saints. And when we get to heaven, we are going to be amazed and rejoice at the great variety of saints already there, worshiping at the altar of God. 